7.38, good morning. You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. So let's have a look through the papers now. Uh, joining us this morning, senior reporter from the I newspaper, Benjamin Butterworth, and broadcaster Liz Kershaw, who's just come in from a cocktail party, <laughs> I think. <laughs> it is lovely having a bit of fur around your neck, isn't it? Adds it's so club. warm. And yeah. I've been told I've got to uh, unfasten it, though, because it was interfering with, with your microphone. microphone. Oh, well. Uh, you've been looking at um, this statistic that one in eight people are paying for private health care. Yeah, this is according to the Office of National Statistics. Uh, health is now becoming a two-tier system. One in eight adults, um, actually just over 13%, had paid for private medical care, 5% uh, using private health insurance and 7% just stumping up the cash mm. and because what, what because they no longer trust the nhs because if you don't if you have a chronic condition such as uh, the need for a new hip or knee um then you can wait two years and i know mm. people who've been in li living with, well well we have worked with people haven't we who've living with chronic pain but one of my relatives is um about 72 and she was just so exhausted with the pain. You can't sleep, you can't, you lose your mobility, you've no quality of life. So in the end, she paid £10,000 and had an, a knee done. And, um, but somebody I know, their father-in-law, similar situation, and paid £20,000. It might have been a double one or something. Anyway, um, and then was given the wrong medication and it's now like not, not you know it's 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 as though it's got Alzheimer's so it, things can go wrong oh. but it, people are absolutely desperate and mm -hmm. I know somebody else who can't get up the stairs now they're on the hands and knees the only way they can get up the stairs and it's like please please go and pay for it you know they, what, what could be if you've got some money they stashed see. away what could be a better way to but anyway I, I just think that if people want to make that choice if they, they should can. be able to, if yeah. they can. Oh. Or if they want to pay for medical insurance, private medical insurance, I really think it should be tax deductible. Well. Is that good or bad for the National Health Service? Well, you're not imposing on the National Health Service, are you? You're not costing the National Health Service anything. So if you want to pay hundreds of pounds a month, which old, more elderly people have to, to get the cover... Why should it? Why should it not be tax deductible? Oh, I must say the long well. the long delays are scary, aren't they? Oh. It's terrifying. Bit, bit of a pipe dream, I think. Tax deductible. Yeah. Yes. To be honest, oh, at the minute. At the minute. Yeah. Yeah. But if you if you if you get met private medical insurance as part of your job package, if you're an employee, mm -hmm. not like me, I'm self-employed. But if you're staff and you get private health insurance, which is for the benefits of the company because they can get you better quicker and get you back at the desk then that's taxable. So why shouldn't it be the other way around? Yeah, I, I have that through the newspaper I work for. Yeah. I have to say, it's you know, I'd never, I've never considered private healthcare before, but it's well, so much quicker and so much it's better. It's wonderful knowing it's there. It is, yeah. it really is. But, you know, I, I think that one of the things the government could do is to use private facilities for NHS patients because there is the space in some of they those do. private medical outlets to help people. I think it's one of the Labour Party's proposals. They did it, I think, in 97 when they, they last came in. They, they paid for lots of NHS patients yes, to I go private. Yeah. And, and I think that probably you should do that at the moment because the cost to the economy and to people's quality of lives after mm. COVID with these 7 million people on waiting lists, I think it would be a justifiable use of, of taxpayers' money at the moment. Um, let's head to the Times, Benjamin. Um, if you want to send cards first class, today is mm. the last day. It is, according yeah. According to the Times. Um, they're not <laughs> gonna, all my friends. They're not going <laughs> to make it. I'm not optimistic. I sent, I sent all my Christmas cards on Monday first class before 6.30, so before they took them. Not one person has received them yet. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, God knows when they'll get there. But um, the last day, theoretically, is today, which is five days earlier than it normally would. But because there are lots of strikes, they've brought it forward. Um, and they say that uh, the CWU, the union that represents 
postal workers is still in dispute. There's a complete strike on the 23rd and 24th of December. And so if you want to get anything to, to your loved ones, or maybe even some cards to people you don't particularly like, uh, you have to send it today by first There was pass. a great um, cartoon, Matt, front page of the Telegraph this Wednesday. And you've, you've seen the pictures of all the mail piling up outside Royal Mail depots, and they've said it's being chewed by foxes yeah. and rats. And this cartoon, it's two rats talking to each other on the top of one of these piles, said, Oh no, I've just eaten a Christmas card from somebody I haven't sent one to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you usually get one, don't you? Like five days before Christmas, you yeah. get a card thing. You can't do oh, about it's it. It's time to do it, yeah. but you haven't. You have I, I, I think it'd be real. 1843, the first Christmas card was sent. Do you think it was You weren't sad? around, were you? Yeah, thanks. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to stop. It's do you think, do you think people... St I still love getting cards. As, I don't think sending somebody an emoji type... No, it's not the same. ...electronic message, it's not the same, is it? Or am I being... No, 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 it's not the same. You know, so... Is it because I'm, I'm 120... <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I'm, up... You know, as a millennial, I find most fellow millennials don't do Christmas cards. No. Why? And it's I've made miserable. such a point of it. And I, you know, last week I sat down with a big pile and a spreadsheet and wrote messages to people. And it, it, it's, I think it really shows your affection for yeah. someone to put the effort in. Yeah, but in. you're making them feel guilty now, knowing that they're probably not going to do no. No, because I, because I know that f few of them do it and will have thought to do it, and mm. you know unless they're rushing around today, it's never going to get to You'll me. You'll get lots of emojis but near I, the day. I, uh. I just think it's nice yeah. to, to show that. That so much, like if you do something for somebody and they send you a thank you card, or if you go and yeah. stay with somebody, I know it is lovely, and you yeah. send a thank you card, it means so much more to receive that mm. handwritten mm. than getting a text. Oh yeah, yeah, Isn't it it? it's just it lovely. Um, let's have a look at fat men in the mail, Liz. <laughs> right, do we have to? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, um, so many uh, porkies now. Seven in ten men are overweight. Twenty-five percent are obese. That's 70% of the whole male population is yeah. overweight. Yeah, more That's than two-thirds of men yeah. are now overweight or obese. It's really serious because it causes so many illnesses and diseases. You know, it's not just that your trousers ride up or you might not be able to pull like you did. Mm. But you, all that, call it visceral fat, there's the subcutaneous fat, which parts of your beer belly. Yeah. And then there's visceral fat, which is the dangerous stuff, which is uh, surrounding all your internal organs, between your organs. And if you have that, then that causes inflammation of the body, and that's what leads to cancers, can bring on type 2 diabetes, dementia. Um, it's really not a good idea mm -hmm. to be carrying that around with you. I mean, I I've written a lot about the world's oldest people, super centenarians. I interviewed the last Edwardian recently, who's 113, and she weighs eight and a half stone. She's always weighed eight and a half stone. And it turns out that the evidence suggests that your weight or lack of has a bigger effect on your life expectancy than your genetics. So people who are physically healthy and of a reasonable weight are more likely to live longer regardless of how long their parents lived. That's how significant it is on our quality or length of life. Mm. Well, there you go. What a lovely story just before Christmas. Well. Uh, when we're all going to eat far too much. <laughs> there you go. Um, Liz, Benjamin, thank you both very much indeed.